Hey guys, my name is Maddie. I'm Naomi. And this is our new Wellness Wednesday format. And we are going to be answering your questions. This week, the question is, how do you feel in control when everything is not going your way? Yes, uh, there's a lot to unload with that question, but we have uh, four main points that Maddie and I are gonna be going over today. Um, within those points, we are going to talk about some experiences that helped us um, answer this question um, and how we've gained control in our lives. Um, so the first one that I'll go over is accepting your emotions, every last one of them, whether it be uh, anger, sadness, all of your emotions are valid. Um, a huge example for a lot of us in the past year was this pandemic uh, because our lives got turned way upside down for a lot of us. I know for myself personally, I am not a California native. I'm from Massachusetts and I basically had to pack up all my stuff in storage, take the clothes I owned and just move back across the country, which all in a week, which is totally not easy and super stressful. And for me, I've never been an online person for school because I know the moment a device is in my face, I'm going to get distracted automatically, like without a doubt. So I had friends who were super excited because they did online school before. Um, but for me, I never have, I've always opted to not because I always liked in person. So my emotions at the time were I was upset because, you know, now I'm not going to be in the place that I considered home. And I was nervous because I was going to be back here at home and I wasn't sure what to expect. And as being the only person going to school, everybody else around me doesn't understand the struggles of college life, especially I was learning the struggles of being online and they have absolutely no idea online. So um, for me, I, I felt like a lot of different feelings going around, but I came to the point that's like, you know what, all my feelings are valid and I definitely am not the only one feeling these things um, because there's literally millions of other people who are in my exact or very similar position right now, so. That's what I, um, that's how I came to just accept my emotions. That week was such a whirlwind too. It was like finding out we were going online to finding out we all had to get off campus so fast. Like it was like whiplash. That was so hard. Yeah. Um, something that kind of has helped me accept control and feel in control is that sometimes there is going to be suffering, but it's how we, how we react to the suffering that counts. And so for me, when COVID happened, like probably everyone else, I was, um, I was pretty happy in my little apartment on campus with my friends all around me and being able to like do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. But I had to go home and like move back into my house with all my, my dad and my seven siblings. So that was a lot. But there was a bit of a silver lining there because what ended up happening is my family's been talking about moving to Oregon since I was like a child. And ever since I was five, my dad's been like, we're going to move to Oregon. We're going to move to Oregon. And it's been like a back burner thought in his head. Obviously I'm 21 now. So it hasn't happened. Um, but randomly he just was like, "Kid, hey, this is that we're moving. And he moved like in December. So if I hadn't been home for COVID, like I wouldn't have spent every single day for the past like, oh my goodness, what is it now? Eight months, nine months of co of a pandemic. <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have seen them every single day. So that was kind of a nice silver lining for me, but what also ended up happening because I had to go home was that there was like no distractions, so I was very or I am a very fast paced person and I like to live my life. Like I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And that's not really sustainable is what I have learned. 
So I would literally like randomly wake up one day and my friend would be like, hey, do you want to drive to Washington? And I was like, okay, let's go. Um, and then obviously there was no spontaneous trips to other states. I had to like sit at home and like have to relax. And it kind of forced me to deal with a lot of emotions that I like, I guess I was kind of hiding from, like I didn't want to deal with them. So then being at home and like being just there and like not being able to do random stuff. I was like, okay, well now let's relax and like actually enjoy reading for fun again. Like how I used to when I was a kid and like actually play board games with my family and like do things that like make me happy instead of just like running around all crazy, which also does make me happy too. But like, it was, it was good. It was much needed. Yeah, that's, um, that's really good, especially like uh, I totally relate to the family thing. I, it's, especially it's like out of all the odds, like, you know, from childhood, your dad was talking about moving and then it just happens at the right time that you're going to be home. He's like, you know what, I'm doing it this, at the end of this year. And you did. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that, Maddie. Um, for me, uh, I've, I've come to like, with, when it comes to suffering, reacting uh, is what it counts, is that, of course, I I didn't love my hometown here. Uh, I mean, I kind of moved across the country. I think that explains enough about that. Uh, just more so that there's not a good history of the city and I didn't want to be part of this, the statistics, uh, the not so good statistics. I wanted to build something new for myself. Um, and having to come back here while my school is in California, but I'm living here at home was really weird. And I, I was upset because I was going to have to be here. And, you know, I, my family doesn't understand school, but, um, I've come to like living here again my best friend is here um my boyfriend's on this east coast so i don't have a time difference with him anymore um and i've come to i've come to like my home again um i feel like i've bonded closer with my family uh because usually when i'm in california i'm only here for summer break which is like three-ish months out of the year so like I spend the majority of my time in California so they don't know my everyday life as much as they now kind of do I mean a little bit it looks different but um you know they've come to understand more just how time consuming school is for me and they respect that now like in the beginning my mom she would want to come in and talk and you know do all these things because we haven't had those conversations since high school be like mom I have class right now and now yeah. like you know she knows my schedule and when my brother wants to come in and talk she's like no don't go in there Nay is in school talk to her in an hour and a half from now um so yeah I've I found a silver lining in that you know um even though I I once the place I once really was not clicking with I now love it again. I work here. I go to school, school here, like, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. no, it's crazy how bad I feel like parents are understanding what Zoom is. Like my dad, I was like, dad, you have to put a shirt on if you're going to walk behind the camera. Like, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, it's honestly like the silver linings have been pretty nice to like be able to spend time with your mom again or like and being able to like appreciate your home in a new sense. It's, I feel like it's different when you come back as an adult, you like see it differently than when you grew up there. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so the last thing we wanted to discuss to answer this question of how you can feel more control is uh, making a list to get things into perspective. Uh, literally like physical list, laying things out um, because I mean, when you have so much things going on in your head, you feel overwhelmed pretty easily. But when you put it down on a piece of paper or something physical that you can see it, you don't have to worry about remembering it because now you have the list doing the remembering for you. Um, I didn't understand how important 
having a list was until I actually started working. I work at Target in my hometown here, and it's my first retail job. And right now, um, we're in we're in the season where like you know the holidays are over. People are kind of you know back to online shopping, um, and there's same amount of work to be done but less people so all of our seasonal people are gone so we have like a small team and this past week i've been feeling like so overwhelmed and my boss is giving me some feedback today and he was like he was like this is your first retail job isn't it i was like yeah he was like i promise you it gets better once we get more payroll he was like it gets better um, he's like, that's why we have these assignment sheets literally every morning. He'll be like, all right, you're going to do this, this, and this day. And he prioritizes it for me. Um, but he'll, he'll tell me, even though I put it prioritized, if you know, if you see that something needs to be in need, just go ahead and do that. Um, because I see something different that the guest, which that's what Target calls customers, see so like if i have he says milk and eggs seem to be the big thing with customers if you don't have that they never want to come back to your store again which is new to me um but he's like if you're gonna if you see all that empty and that's where the need is just go fill that need even if it's a little bit it'll make a huge difference than if you didn't do it at all um and he was just giving advice that like, you know, a lot of people in this store are going through smaller teams. Ours is just getting hit the most because I mean, our team has always been the smallest in the store, um, but lists help a lot. And like, whenever I I'm forgetting, like in the midst of what else did he want me to do today? I look at the list and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I got to do this at some point. Um, so lists help a lot. Yeah, no. If there's anyone watching who knows me in real life, I am I am a list person, 100%. Like, color organized, fancy pencil, paper, journals, like, all my life is, like, in a list. And what really I have learned that, like, helps me is when I'm anxious and, like, overwhelmed, I will, like, literally feel like the whole world is coming down. Like, I'll be like, oh my goodness, I have to do this, and then this, and then there's this, but then, like, there's a whole pandemic and then there's this and then there's like all this stress and so sometimes when the world feels like it's falling apart I'll like make a list of everything that's actually wrong and then seeing like everything I'm actually stressed about on paper that feels like a million things in my head is like maybe five things I'm like oh it's not that big of a list and like some of them I can't change and some of them I can. And so what I can control, I like will. And so if something's like, I'm anxious because I haven't done the dishes and my house is a mess, like then I can just look at that and be like, well, you just do the dishes. Like, why, why are you freaking out about that? Like, but what I'm actually stressed out about is something I can't control, like missing people who I can't see right now or like wanting to go back to school right now, which is not an option. So it like helps me to see what I can take care of right now, what I can't take care of right now. And if I can't control it, then like sometimes you don't have to worry about it, even though that's really hard to do because I'm still worried about it. But knowing that you don't need to like keep that like stressful thought in the front part of your brain and like be stressed out about it and be like, well, I am so stressed about this, but sometimes it's easier to just keep it on the list and like put it down mm -hmm. for me at least. Yeah, I agree completely, especially when it's like something like uh, the dishes. It's like, well, you you can control that. Be like, all right, go do dishes then. You know, one thing off the list, one less thing that you're going to be stressed about later. Um, so yeah, list, I'm telling you. It might seem silly when you first do it, but you'll be surprised at how literally more clear your brain feels after you do that because like i said it's now the list does it for you you don't have to so yeah um so yeah those are our four main points that we uh wanted to go over with you today on how to answer this really good question uh thank you to who sent it um on how how do you feel in control when everything's not going your way um, 
before we close out, we do have some uh, little housekeeping rules. Of course, um, we it's now recruitment season um, and we are recruiting for our peer educators, um, which is exciting. Um, all of us are graduating, so we'll need people to take our place. Um, but to be a peer educator, basically it's what me and Maddie are. Um, we work for the counseling center um, and you're basically, the way I see it is you're, you're connecting the resources that uh, the professionals on campus have to your peers that they might not even know about that exist. And you as the peer, you know, you know the things that they don't know and you just give it out. And of course, the big thing is helping people understand that um, breaking down the stigma of mental health and that it's okay to not be okay but when you're not okay there's places to go to um so that's what being a peer educator is all about to me and i absolutely love it um nathaniel's a really good uh supervisor and so are the other um professionals at the counseling center um they're really good people with really good really great hearts um who are there to help not judge at all so if you're at all interested um the deadline is March 5th, so you do have some time to think about it. The application is on their website and the link in um, our Instagram bio as well. What do you have to say, Maddie, about the program? At APU Counseling Center. Um, no, it's so good. I wasn't sure what to expect when I first heard about it on campus, but it's a really good way to like learn even a little bit more the ins and out of working in a counseling setting. Cause I'm sure if you're interested in the peer educator role, you're eventually angle is something in a psychology field or like a helping people field. And so it's interesting to get like an inside perspective on what that even entails a little bit more. And it is definitely, definitely worth the application. You guys should do it. It's really fun. and. It's like the only time during all of my Zooms that I get to like actually unmute myself and talk to other people my age. So even if it's for that, it's it's really nice. And also, this is our new Wellness Wednesday format. So instead of going on Instagram Lives, if any of you have seen those before, we're now gonna do pre-recorded um, sessions like this and we want questions from you like the really excellent question we had today so if you have questions about anything that you want Naomi myself or any of the other peer educators to answer you should ask them even if they're silly we won't know who sent them so there's a link in our Instagram bio feel free to send any of your questions to us we literally would love to hear from you yes and of course, as always, the Counseling Center is still, and probably I'm pretty sure always, uh, is offering free counseling. Um, I mean, they got 24 seven uh, support. So if you, know, if you need to talk to somebody at 11 at night, way past hours, you can. Um, how do you do that? You call this number, 626 eight one five two one zero nine um if you want to set up counseling services all you have to do is go in your cougar health portal uh fill out the paperwork and then you call that same number and lovely kim is going to answer and she's going to help you set up um a time that works for you and a counselor um so don't be afraid to seek counseling uh even if it's literally you going one time and never again. Um, you know what? It's okay. Um, so yeah, that resource will always be there for you. Um, but thank you to um, for watching this. I hope this really helps you learn more about control and how you can get, you know, feel control about things. So thank yeah. you. Thank you guys.